Hello, a very good evening or good morning to you, depending on where you're watching us from. Thank you, thank you so much for joining us. A warm welcome to you. Of course, I'm seeing very many people already logged into the to the um, online platform. Well, welcome, welcome to today's session. My name is Martha Inuma. I'm an investment consultant at Savo, and I'll be your host today. Today's topic is in investing back home. We are live on all our social media handles at Savo.ke on YouTube at Savo.ke on Facebook, and I can see comments coming in. Thank you, thank you so much. We are past the countdown. Maybe I can just go straight to uh, reading the comments that have already come in. Amo Tamanda, thank you so much for joining. She's saying, waiting, we are live now. Uh, Espada Mayo is saying, goja goja humiza matumbo, we are waiting. Thank you so much, Espada. Um, Dennis, Kivudi, Dennis Kivudi is actually our investor, saying to Mekuja. Abed Musa is saying, what an opportunity to learn from you, Martha. Thank you so much, Abed. And Irene Guitar is saying, uh, we are counting down. Karibu sana, Irene. This, that's on YouTube. On Facebook, I can see we are live on uh, Tavo.ke. So drop your comments. Uh, let's engage. Let, let's make it an interactive. I can see also Instagram. We are live on Instagram as well. Um, we have about six people who have already joined us. Thank you so much, Juliet. I've seen Maureen, Lisa, Helen, Monte, and DJ Rama. DJ Rama first, I hope I'm saying it right. But thank you so much for joining us. Of course, um, our focus today is, as I've said, investing back home. That is the topic we are dealing with today, investing back home. Before I dig in deep, we can start with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I want to thank you. I want to give you all the glory and honor for giving us this yet another opportunity to to share the knowledge that you, we have acquired because of you, Lord. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of health. We thank you for the Savorites and for everyone else who will join us today, O Lord. How I pray that this session may be impactful and that we may touch someone's life and make, enable them to make better decisions towards their financial independence journey. We bless you. We guide you. We, we, we ask for your guidance, O Lord. And we ask of you, O Lord, that you may reign in our thoughts in our actions, and in each and everything that we'll share today, O oh Lord, may we glorify your name. It is in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Thank you so much. Once again, we are live on all our social media handles at Savo.ke. Please, let's make this interactive. Let's share. Uh, I can see, again, YouTube. We have Tony Akumu already here. Thank you so much, Tony. We have Sally Kimutai locked in. We have Mtukus Telamaris. Can't wait for the discussion. Uh, we have someone by the name ML. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. Our topic for today is investing back home. And um, maybe just to give you a brief of who Savo is. So Savo is a real estate investment company. We are based in Nairobi. We focus on small units, one bedrooms and studios where you can invest, then um, rent them out for monthly income. And we are guided by our purpose. We are very passionate about financial independence. And hopefully, if you get a chance, you can check out our website, see our story, where, 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 where this all started. So we are very passionate about financial independence. And our purpose is to enable all our investors achieve financial independence. And thank you so much for, Dennis, now that I've seen one of our investors is in, please tell us uh, what is financial, financial independence to you. And, um, and uh Again, thank you so much for joining us. I can see comments coming in, comments coming in. At Savo.ke, please drop your comment. Let us know where you're watching us from. Of course, I had said uh, the, um, the topic of today really, really focuses on diaspora. And there are very many people who are joining us today who are in the diaspora. So let us know where you're watching us from. Uh, what are your expectations? And yes, we can engage further. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Sid. Mr. Sid is one of our investors as well, and he's in the UK. Uh, he's saying, Mr. Sid, tumekuwa na sasa. Uh, Grace Kimani, we can see. He's, she's saying hello. Uh, on Instagram, we have hey, very many people who've joined us again. We have Wayne, we have Kinyua Guantai, we have Paul Mbai. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm seeing Eric Wanyonyi. Uh, he's saying Philadelphia. Oh, oh, he's in Philadelphia. Manze, sisi wa Kenya. Oh, he's, so he's watching us live from Philadelphia. Please let us know where you're watching us from. I can see from Facebook, Betty Omar, she's saying she's watching us in London, UK. We are live from Nairobi, of course. And um, 
just to just to just to take us back to the topic of the day. Our topic of the day was direct was directed by our purpose. As I've said, uh, we are very passionate about enabling our investors achieve financial independence. So very many people, especially if you're in the diaspora, you really want to invest. But the main question is, how do you invest? Especially if you're in the diaspora, how do you choose an investment back home? Yeah. And uh, so um, I'm going to take you through just the very many factors that you need to look at when you're choosing an investment. Yeah. But before that, I would just want to understand what is financial independence to you when you're talking about investment. What do you want to? Why do you want to invest? What is the need out there? And um, I can see. Oh. Again, uh, we have Lawrence Mutura. Lawrence Mutura is also our investor. Uh, he said, tuned in from Roy Sambu, Nairobi. I can see very many people coming in on, face, on, on YouTube as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, guys, for, for joining us. Please let us know where you're watching us from and wh why would you want to invest? What, why would you, what, what would drive you to invest? And um, as we think about that, in Savo, we talk of financial independence and how we define it is having having assets that generate for you sufficient passive cash flow to facilitate your your purpose yeah having assets that generate for you sufficient passive monthly cash flow that that facilitate your purpose so very many times um we get comfortable unfortunately when you look at just the journey towards investment we get to a point where we get comfortable with our main cow so if you if you're on salaried you're, you're very comfortable on the salary job that at the end of the day, you keep working until the end because you don't have assets or investments that actually give you passive cash flow to facilitate what you really like to do. Yeah? And um, uh, when, when looking at just the history of Savo, so Savo, Savo, Savo began uh, from a dream of, of, being, of, of stating that we want to achieve financial independence in the next you know, 15 years. So of course, when you're thinking of financial independence, you're thinking of the, of the number. So what amount is that that will make you say that I'm actually financially independent? You're thinking about the time frame, yeah? So the journey of Savo began from a story of two couples who decided they want to get to financial independence in the next 15 years. They tried out the investment, and then they saw this is something that, that was working. So after 15 years, they started Savo, which was now guiding them towards their purpose. Yeah, and um, so when you're talking of investing, yeah, what are the things that you're looking at when investing back home? Very many times we run into investment simply because it's the normal, it's the status quo. I mean, you make money, you need, you've been told about investment, so you pass through Savo and you saw, you know, financial independence and invest or invest back home and you're in the diaspora. And, and you run to, to choose any investment simply because you have been able to access it easily or it's just by, you know, you saw something and you decided, okay, let me invest in, you know, I saw an ad on land, let me buy that piece of land. Yeah, but there are certain factors you need to think about or rather question before you invest. Yeah, and number one is starting with the why. So why are you investing? What is the need you're trying to solve? Coming back to our purpose here in Savo, yes, we enable fi investors achieve financial independence, but what problems are we trying to solve? Very many people are looking for financial security. And it could be so. In, in diaspora, it could be very many people are looking for credible investments or just accessible financing. So once you've defined the why, once you've defined why you want to invest, then you have a better, you know, you have a better path or a clearer path to start your investment journey. To the comments i can see on youtube uh ml is watching us from zurich there's a uh, caleb thank you so much for joining us caleb he's watching us from the dallas we have alice kungu from ruaka thank you so much alice i can see facebook we have peter he's saying tuned in from acacia on gatarongai that's also diaspora in kenya <laughs> well thank you so much thank you so much peter for joining us i can see very many people have joined us on instagram thank you thank you so much um and, and we are headed to the question of why, why, why invest? So if you have invested, why did you invest? Or why are you looking for a reason to invest? And so when we're talking of the why, yeah, you, if, if, if you look at just the investment journey, the why is the core for the journey. The why is the core. It's, it's at the center of the whole journey. So once you've defined the why, then you're able to stick to the cause because it comes with a lot of clarity. Yeah? 
once you've defined the why, it comes with a lot of clarity that gives you the discipline to stick to the cause. And then if you haven't defined your why, then it becomes very hard for you to invest in the long term. You end up saying, uh, I think I want to put in money where I can remove money very fast. I want to do X so that, because this will give me more money or faster money or an, a quicker return on investment. But when you look at the just general financial independence journey, it's a long journey. And it's a long journey full of sacrifices, a lot of discipline involved, a lot of, you know, just self-awareness to understand why am I doing this, yeah? And so, once you have, you know, identified the why, then you're being pro you'll be protected from many, very many disruptions, yeah? Think of consumerism, think of, of um, windfall gains, think of betting, think of the bad habits that might actually limit you to getting to your financial independence. The moment you've defined your why, then you have a lot more clarity to actually say, I'm sticking to this because this is the gratitude and this is the, this is the time frame I've given myself to actually achieve that gratitude. Yeah? Once you've understood the why, then again, you've understood, you're, you're at a point of full self-realization. You understand your ability, yeah? so you are able to actually understand this is, this is how much I can afford with or without getting, you know, additional, you know, cash from somewhere, may it be a loan. This is my capability, this is my ability, this is my financial ability, and this is my risk. So this is the amount of risk I can, I can, I can bear, yeah? So you, you've, understand, you've understood yourself enough to actually state your ability and to state the amount of risk that you're willing to take. And, and so with this clarity, um, then you, your, your actions become defined. Yeah? You start acting towards your, your, your goal. You start acting towards the clarity that you have. And therefore, when you get clarity, it goes over time to build habits. Yeah? And then in these habits, then you develop a character. So once you've gotten clarity, yeah, you end up building actions, that actions that build your character. Sour, sour. And so when you look at something like character, even from an investment perspective, character in itself, the discipline to actually save to invest, the discipline to actually invest and reinvest the profit surpasses the will to invest. So you might actually be making a lot of money. You've been quite exposed to where to invest and the options that are there, but it's out of will. So you've not defined why you want to invest. You want to invest because you have the lump sum. Yeah? But the will is short-lived. So if you're banking on a will, if you're trying to invest based on a will, the will is short-lived because you would want gratitude, you'd want, you'd want to justify it every time that why you're living lean. But if you're, living on a, if, you're, if you're investing because you have defined your purpose, then it becomes very easy to even invest in the long term. Yeah? So say, for example, even when you talk about investments like real estate, I, I personally and Savo, we're real, in the real estate space. If you're looking at real estate and a reasonable you know, return on investment, it takes about 8 to 15 years for you to get a proper return on investment. Yeah? And how many are willing to wait eight for 8 to 15 years? Yeah? So the will becomes shortened. But if you have a purpose, so you, 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 you have clarity that you're investing to reinvest, to secure your future, for example, or to sustain, you know, getting to a point where you'll actually be able to facilitate your purpose with the funds or the cash flow coming from the investment, and therefore you don't have to work, yeah? And so maybe, sorry, just to a recap of what we are doing today. Today we are talking about investing back home. We would want to make this very interactive. So we are live on all our social media handles at savo.ke. Please send your comments. Let us know how, why, what is your need towards, you know, why would you invest? Why, why, why are you even planning to invest? Uh, you can get us on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Instagram at savo.ke. My name is Martha. I'm your host of today. And yes, I can go straight into the comments. I can see um, um, Susie Arama. Thank you so much for joining us. She's saying she's watching us from Dallas, Texas. Uh, I can see Kevin at CIA. I'm on that journey. And I'm loving every bit of it. Thank you so much, Kevin. I believe that's very inspiring because the journey towards financial independence is not easy. And you honestly need people who've gone through the journey to walk you through the journey. I can see Caroline Muturi. She, she, she's one of our investors. Thank you so much, Carol, for joining us. She's watching us from, uh, so she's watching us from Bangladesh. Thank you so much, Caroline. I can see Gerald Ngogin. Gerald, hey, woo. 
Gerald Ngugi is also our investor. He's saying, amazing work, Martha. Love the work that you're doing. Thank you so much, Gerald. Susie Aroma, Aroma, she's saying, I pray that Kenya invests more, but all the commercial buildings and residential buildings and land, uh, oh, but all the commercial buildings and res residential buildings and land, and my prayer is that we can buy back the port of Mombasa. Oh, oh, but, oh, sorry, sorry. I pray that Kenyans invest more, buy all the commercial buildings and residential buildings and land, and my prayer is that we can buy back the port of Mombasa. Uh, we have one of our technical guys called Sam Chalo. If you see anything online, this is the team. Sam Chalo is from Mombasa, and maybe an Ezra Tuambia. His pain points. <laughs> uh, Sally Kim Tai, starting, start with the why. This is the biggest question to ask yourself in basically everything that you do. Thank you so much, Sally. Uh, KD, thank you so much. He's watching from Tiger Fitness Gym. Thank you so much. Uh, Abed himself on YouTube is saying the why initiates financial discipline as you walk the journey towards financial independence. That's very true, Abed. And I was saying the why just gives you a clear, you know, a clear path. Then you you're protected from ma very many distractions. If you're thinking about you know consumerism, especially right now towards the end of the year, very many things look very lovely to the eye. But if you've defined the why and you have a process, or rather you have a commitment towards your investment, then it's very easy for you to be disciplined enough. And by the way, discipline takes time. It's a culture that it's, you're not born to not spend. Because ideally, and unfortunately, even from the education systems that we have, and everywhere that we go, and how we've been raised, especially us as Africans, is you work hard, you go to school, you get money, you buy, you know, you buy a car, you buy, and if you're telling someone you have a lot of money, the indications are, what, what car are you driving? What phone do you have? What kind of house do you live in? Yeah? But the discipline comes over time. But the moment you've understood the why, then it means your thought process is very clear. Then it's very easy for you to actually be disciplined towards the journey. Uh, Kelvin Juguna, he's saying, watching. Thank you. Oh, watching from Durban. Thank you so much, Kelvin. Irene Guitar is saying, I quote Warren Buffett, if you don't find a way to make money while you sleep, you will work until you die. That is very true. And that's why as a server, we give you the option to invest. And that's why we're even talking about the topic of investing back home. Because if you're, if you're at a point where you, have, you are only relying on your salary, or you know it could be a small business, it could be a big business, but you're only relying on one thing to give you cash flow, what if it's removed from the picture? Yeah? So having investments just gives you a buffer to survive. Yeah? Having investments gives you a buffer to actually live your purpose. Yeah? And being at a point where, I say, where you'd say, at least at 40, I can say I quit my job and I'll be able to live, you know, lead my lifestyle properly. Sorry, so many comments are coming in. Let me just go back. So uh, Dennis Kivuli is saying, happy customer of Savo. Thank you so much, Dennis. Uh, Kilemi Isaac, what are some of the requirements for investing in Kenya for a person who is a Kenyan but has been in the diaspora for so many years? Yeah. What, uh, his question is, what are some of the requirements for investing in Kenya for a person who is in Kenya but has been in the diaspora for so many years? Maybe I can just touch a bit on that. Yeah? So if you're investing in Kenya yeah, and you're a resident, you're a citizen of the Republic of Kenya, it's very easy for you to invest because all you need is, of course, an, a, a KRA pin. And then, and then we start off the process of investment. Yeah? So different things will require a bit different, you know, um, legal paperwork, but let me talk about real estate. So for example, in Savo, if you're, if you're a citizen of Kenya, all you need to, to have is a KRA pin. Where a KRA pin, you will not be able to acquire property if you do not have a KRA pin. So of course, you need to return your taxes and all that. Number two, if you're, if you're investing in Kenya and you are a Kenyan, but you do not have the KRA pin. Yeah? So you might have your postal address, and of course, we utilize even the postal address that you have in the diaspora. It's not a problem. So if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're a Kenyan, but you do not have your KRA pin, as a Savo, we've given, we, we have lawyers that will help you process the KRA pin at a, at a bit of a cost, but we'll take you through the process of accessing a KRA pin. Once you have a KRA pin, then it's, we'll, we are able to register the property under your name. Yeah? If you're, if you're in the diaspora and you're not Kenyan, and most people who I have seen are in the diaspora and they're not Kenyans, most of them have partners who are Kenyans. Yeah? So we can, we, can, we, can process, we can process a legal documentation, but your partner, of course, having a partner that is Kenyan is, given, is even a better 
uh, is, it gives you a better place, you know, to start the investment process. So just getting everything in order. Um, what I would encourage, of course, if you're in the diaspora, uh, be able to understand where you're investing. Yeah? You might have all the documents right, but you need to understand who are these people I'm investing in? What are they doing? Do I understand the investment in itself? Can I get a testimonial or can, am I able to even come back to Kenya and look at the site? Or can I send someone who's actually reliable on my end to come and view the site with me? I'll be able to talk about all that a, a, a bit at the, towards the end. Sarah, she's saying hi all. Sarah from UK. Thank you so much, Sarah. This is the topic I love hearing about. So looking forward to learn. Thank you so much, Sarah. I hope you'll be able to learn. Robert Ndugu, Ndumu, sorry, tuned in from Certified Home Westlands. Thank you so much, Robert. Stella Maris, by investing back home, does that mean include that that does that include in shags? <laughs> Thank you so much, Stella. I expected such a question. Uh, of course, if you're thinking of home, if you're in the diaspora, your home could be Kenya, your home could be Rwanda, your home, you know, you could be coming from any country. If you're in Kenya, your home could be within, the, you know, the towns, could be Mombasa, Nairobi, like some villa, they don't have a port now. But you, you, in where you call home, of course, is where you originate from. And when you're looking at places to invest, there are very many factors to consider. Yeah? One, you have already understood the why. So Stella, I'm assuming you've understood why you need to invest. Say you want to invest for a secure future. So meaning you're looking for a place which will give you sufficient monthly passive cash flow. Then in Amanisha, if you're investing here, if you're investing in your shares, you don't need to be there every weekend because that becomes very active. And then it means you will not be able to be fully, you know, included in the activity back home and fully included in your current job yeah so those are the kind of factors you need to look at is the investment passive if it's active is it something that i'm willing to let go of everything and actually focus on it as my only source of income yeah but if you're looking at things now when you're looking th thinking of things like real estate of course it's it, it, it in most cases it's a passive investment where if the company is providing um management yeah so from the construction to the management it means it becomes a bit more passive so you don't have to go and collect the rent now you look at what are the returns in that area yeah? So what is the need I'm trying to solve with this investment in that area? You might, want to, you might be looking at a secure future, but you want to go into real estate. And then when looking at real estate, you need to now look, what is this kind of apartment that I'm building? Is it a home? Is it, you know, what kind of apartment am I buying? What is the cost? Where will it be? And what is the return on investment? If the return on investment does not make sense, then even going back home might not be a solution. What I would encourage, most of us back home, if you're talking, if you're, if you're from Kenya and you're, you're coming from Shags, yeah, you might actually start investing even in people. Yeah? You might be at a point where you'd say you can go and start, you, you start a children's home or a, or a foundation back home that will now enable people to be, to be exposed to education and things like that. But of course, if you're looking at investing in real estate, you're looking at return. So meaning whatever you're doing back home needs to give you sufficient passive cash flow. I hope I've been able to, to answer you still. So I'm saying Bob. Bob is saying, hey, thank you so much, Bob. Regina, Ruhi, Regina is one of our investors. She's saying, hi, Martha, what does Savo do differently to build diaspora confidence, seeing as many people have, banned, have been banned? That's actually one of the questions we are going to ask later in the, in the session. Yeah. Uh, how has your investment experience been? I think when, 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 maybe just to talk about Savo, I might not mention other companies, just to talk about Savo and uh, co considering I've been here for about three years. Um, so we at Savo honestly believe in integrity. Yeah? We have a promise that we make to the investors to enable you achieve financial independence. For us to be able to live our purpose, then it means we need to tick the box of, gaining, of, of giving you confidence as an investor. How do we get, tick the box? Meaning, if we are promising to finish the project, we actually finish the project. If you are promising an 8% return, we actually give you an 8% return. If, you're, we have, if we are promising affordable, amazing apartments, we actually stick to the core of offering affordable, amazing apartments. When you look at Savo, Savo has been in existence for the past five years. So far, we've done a number of six projects. And um, our record of delivery has really helped Savo grow. I am very sure most of us, if you've heard of Savo, you probably think of Savo Ile Awanyama. 
no, no, we are the servo with the buildings. So, and, and, and it's because our name has been growing based on referral system, yeah? So we start a project, we look at the project until completion. Yeah, so we promise to finish a project. We finish a project until completion. We promise management. We get you a tenant. We manage your unit and you know send you the money. Once we have done you, you know we've we've treated you perfectly. You feel like say for example the way Dennis has said he's an happy investor. So he he's invested with us. He has a tenant. He's getting his rent and he's actually growing or getting closer to his financial independence, if you have not reached financial independence. And so if Dennis is happy, he'll be very comfortable to refer someone else to our project. Number two, we've tried to be as, as visible as possible. You're able to see us everywhere. If you go to our website, if you go to our Facebook page, if you come to site, if you meet a Savorite, we call ourselves Savorite. So Savorites are people who believe in our purpose. Savorites are our investors, and Savorites are our residents. So if you meet a Savorite, the language is the same, yeah? We do something called savonization where we, we, we get you savonized, we get you fired up. Fired up is financial independence, retire early. So with that kind of transparency, if you call me or you call someone within the Savorite team and the language is the same, it's very easy for you to actually be confident. But of course, we encourage all our investors, if you're able to come to Kenya, please come and visit the project. Sometimes we also go to the diaspora and we get to meet our investors who are not able to come. And sometimes we get people who are relatives to the investors who, are, who can't come and we're very flexible to take them to site. Also, we provide something called a weekly site update where you see the progress of your project where you've invested. And so it builds you confidence. Yeah. Uh, I hope I've been able to answer you, Regina. Uh, Kelvin is saying discipline does take time. Well put. Daban is watching. Thank you so much, Kevin. Uh, Tony Akumu, I would love to invest to achieve financial security so that I can be able to do what I love tomorrow without having to worry about my finances. Watching from Mogadishu. Thank you so much, Tony. Actually, we had asked, uh, why do you want to invest? You know, why, why are you actually investing? Thank you so much, Tony, for that. Paul Aguna, Paul Aguna is one of our investors. Nice and eye-opening topic. Thank you so much, Paul. Mary Nganga, Mary Nganga watching from Ruiru, Kenya. Thank you so much, Mary. Eta Madete, Eta Madete is one of our investors. She's saying, hi, I'm happy. I'm a happy Savo investor in a Savo studio, Royal Suburbs. Looking forward to buying another one, you, another unit soon. Thank you so much, Eta. We'll be happy to take you through the investment journey. Fred Lavate is saying, Fred Lavate here. Looking forward to invest with you. Thank you so much, Fred. Uh, of course, we'll give all the details uh, for the investments. Uh, if you want to, you know, just know more about our investments and what you can do, you, you know, what you can buy in Savo. Jorogi and Jorogi is saying, what is the timeline for Savo Skywalk? So I'll, 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 of course, take you through the Skywalk project, but just basically, Savo Skywalk started in July 2020, July this year. We're looking to complete it in July 2022. That is 20 months. Yes, but I'll take you through the, the Savo Skywalk project. Sally is saying, you have mentioned about sending your relatives to check our projects to invest. What other due diligence process would you advise? I will go deeper into the, project, in, into the, into the due diligence uh, process. Sally, so I'll be able to answer you on that. Esther is saying, I like to work with I like to work with you. Thank you so much, Esther. We would love to work with you too. Dennis Mboti, they do what they say. I am in Dallas, Texas. I highly recommend this company. Dennis is also one, one of our investors. Thank you so much, De Dennis. Alice Kungu is saying, What are what other areas does do Savo engage in? If I have a residential home, can you build for a fee? Yeah. So when I was, Alice, maybe I can just answer you differently. When I was answering Regina earlier on, she asked, how do we build confidence in our investors in the diaspora? Yeah. In Savo, we do end-to-end. -end. We offer an end-to-end -end uh, service. So we, we get data. So we look for an area. We get research, do proper data, and understand the environment and what is the need in that environment. Number two, we design the buildings ourselves. Number three, we sell the buildings. We build and we manage. Everything is done in-house. We do not incorporate third parties, third parties being loans, third parties being contractors, third parties being agents. We do everything ourselves. So because of that, it requires a lot of integrity, a lot of discipline, a lot of objectivity. We focus our energies to our project. We do not do personal projects, but simply because our purpose guides us to enabling our investors. If by any chance we backslide and start another project, then it means we have pressure to do the two. Remember I said, if you're planning to invest back home and you're still having 
are, you are still having a daily job, then it means your investment needs to be passive, not active. Because if it's active, then it means you're, you're trying to give 100% here and 100% there. If we start diverting, then it means we might fail you in one way or another. So we don't do private developments. We only do our development and, and do it end to end. So from the, from the data to design to build to managing and achieving, enabling our investors to achieve financial independence. Peter is saying, good information. Thank you so much, P Peter. Sarah is saying, do you help build if one has a plot already? I've already mentioned that. Of course, we have other types of partnerships. So we might, we might consider maybe buying your land, depending on where it is, and if it suits our purpose, or doing a joint venture. Uh, I can go to Facebook. Sorry, I've taken a bit more time on YouTube. Uh, Facebook, I can see Julia. She's saying, hello, Martha. What's the process I take as a diaspora new investor? from diaspora when I want to start investing in Savo. So luckily, and just looking at the environment and uh, what COVID unfortunately has done to the society, it has actually proved to us that everything can be done online. Clearly, we are doing this session fully online, but um, very many things have changed. And we, we try to make the investment process as easy and as fulfilling as, as, as possible. One of, the, one of the values that we uphold as Savo is experience. So we try to give you a fulfilling experience. So if you're an investor in the diaspora, of course, even later on in the, in the, um, in, in the show, I'll be able to sh just share the projects that we have. So if you're an investor in the diaspora, it means you've already selected a project that you're interested in or in the options that are available. You pick a unit, you'll be able to show, to be, you'll be able to be taken through our, uh, by our fire partners. We call them fire partners because they take you through the, fire, the investment journey. Yeah? And so you'll be able to pick a unit, you know, select a payment plan, and, um, and we start off the, the, investment, the investment process. So we start off by legal, the legal process where we do an agreement for sale. An agreement for sale is an actual legal document that is stamped and is used at the end when we are doing registration process. The agreement for sale is a legal document that you can use in court and you can even terminate the contract. Yeah? So we do an agreement for sale. What we require in the agreement for sale is copies of your ID, your PIN, and your postal address. Of course, the, now it will incorporate the payment plan that you've taken, the unit, the price, and all that. Yeah. Once we've done the agreement for sale, this is, this is done on email. It's sent to you on email. You can review. You can use your lawyers to review. But our lawyers do end to end. So they do the agreement all the way to the very end for the, for the you know, registration process of the unit. Once you, we've done the agreement for sale, and you've reviewed and you're comfortable, we can either have you, have, have you um, sign in front of a notary public. If you're not able to access a notary public, you can sign in front of our, of our lawyers on video. So we see you signing the copies, and then you send us back the hard copies. Why we need the hard copies? These copies are used for registration, and these are the copies that we are also left with to just show as evidence of your you know, commitment to the unit. Once we've done the stamping and all that, we send back the copy, and once the investment is ready, the project is ready, you can definitely come, come here. We hand over the project to you, or we can hand over the project to you in the diaspora if you're not able to come. But the investment process is quite, quite easy. Um, Betty is saying, Lillian Odiambo, thank you so much. Uh, Odiambo, Juliet, oh, wow. Uh -huh. I can see also Instagram people have joined. Uh, maybe before I go on with... Um, comments, I can, I can go on with the, <clears throat> you know, uh, the next factor. So we've already defined the why. You've already understood why do I want to invest, yeah? What kind of need am I feeding? The moment you've defined the why, then it will define all these other things, the return, the size, the type of investment, the, the location of the investment, the process, the company that you'll pick and all that. But the most important thing is due diligence. And uh, in Savo, we usually do something called Fire Friday. We do it every Friday. We once did a topic on due diligence, and we'll be able to share a link so that you can just see the whole, you know, structure of due diligence and what you need to, what what factors you need to consider. But when you think of due diligence, very many people, and unfortunately, the diaspora has really suffered, and even people in Kenya, people have really lost their hard-earned uh, money, uh, especially in the real estate space. Yeah, but. Uh, could it be that there are things that we do not look at when we are doing due diligence? I don't know. Yeah? Could it be just credibility behind the developers? Yeah? But these things take time. If you have decided, if you have made a decision to actually invest, now you need to go back to the most important thing, due diligence. So when you're thinking of due diligence, you're thinking of where am I investing? 
Who are these people? Do they even have a physical office? What are these projects they're talking about? What have they done before? Is this project that I'm investing in, you know, ongoing, yeah? How can I pay to, how ca in which form can I pay to make my investment actually secure, yeah? And um, unfortunately, when you're talking of due diligence, most, most people who sell put in a bit of light to just be impressive, yeah? And unfortunately, if you just buy the, the price that you're actually seeing, you know, that you're seeing by your eye, you might actually lose a lot of money. And especially in Kenya, very many people have lost money when investing in land, in real estate, even, even sending your relatives, and they end up, you know, just crushing your whole dream. And when you're thinking of due diligence, you know, there, there are 10 things that you should look at when, say, for example, you're talking about real estate. I'll talk about real estate because Savo fully focuses on real estate. Number one, who is the developer? Yeah? What is the history of this developer? Um, fortunately, things like education, uh, you know, if you have something in, in the background of education. So, for example, like the owner of Savo, one of the owners of Savo is a chartered financial analyst. Yeah? You won't be able to be in that group if you, okay, if you don't have a lot of integrity. Yeah? So, uh, even educational background and their history, what, where, where are they from? Why, what is the reason behind them starting this development or this project or this company? Yeah? So once you've defined who, who the developer is, and the way you can define it, of course, is by using things like CR12. You need to get the due diligence documents up front. So look at the CR12. Understand who are the owners of the, of the company or the development that you're going into. Yeah? Credibility of the developer. So what have they done? Yeah? Are you able to actually see a tangible, you know, project that they have done. I really like when men invest. By the way, no offense. Yeah? Wanaume wanaangalia mjengo wa ishike hivi ndio wanne. True story. As in, it's very hard for a man to actually invest into something that they cannot see. In fact, I remember, I, I don't know if he's joined us, there's one of our investors who um, was buying a project on, 12th, on 11th floor and he told me, I trust you and I will give you, I'll, 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 I'll I promise I will buy, but I need to see if you guys are on first floor, if you can at least sixth floor, so that I can see this project is ongoing. But it's true, and I totally respect when you have such fears, yeah? Because I need, I need, if you're coming to me, I would appreciate if you ask me, you know, questions. What have you done? Where is the project? I want to go and see the project. I would honestly respect that. Because once you've seen the project, once you've seen the history of these developers, if they've done other things, you'll actually be at a position to say, yeah, these guys look like they have a bit of ability to even finish this project. Uh, number three is, does the developer have an office? Okay. Sometimes, unezapata, especially here in Nairobi, you'll get land in Meandikwa to Kibao if you want to buy. And unfortunately, sometimes those land are not for sale. Yeah. So these people who you're trying to buy from, yeah, the developers, do they have an office? Yeah. Do they have something physical where you can actually go and see, you know, who the team is? Like, what, 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 what incorporates, say, for example, you're talking about Savo. Who is Savo? Who are these Savorites who actually work with Savo? Um, so, of course, I've said, has this developer done anything previously? So, the project that, you're, that you'd want to buy, and, of course, the historic, you know, work, uh, data. And then, do you know anyone who is invested in that company? When you look at a, a place, uh, like a company like Savo, um, Savo, we've been really, really under, under the water, yeah? We highly believe in referral and reinvestment. We believe that if we have done you justice, it's very easy for you to spread, you know, the word of Savo. And we try to enable our investors believe in our purpose. The moment you believed in our purpose, then it's very easy for, for you to even spread the word, for you to sell, to sell it for us, yeah? But would you, by any chance, just dig deep and see, do you know anyone who's invested in the project before? Especially if you're in the diaspora. Say, for example, I think I've seen very many people who are in the UK. You can, you can reach out to our investors. I've seen Mr. Sid. Mr. Sid is one of our investors, and he knows about us, yeah? So if you're in the UK and you, you know, you're, you're wondering, okay, who are these people? Reach out to people in the UK. Luckily, the diaspora team is very tight. And like coming back to Kenya, in the diaspora, very many people know very many other people. So it's usually very easy to get the referral system working in the diaspora. So ask around. Look for a testimonial. Of course, we've done, we've, we have things that are online. Go online. Check. What are people talking about, you know, about the company? And then um, number six is visit the project you'd like to invest in. 
visit as many times as possible. And if you can't visit, even if you're sending me to the site, let me give you a video call so that you can actually see that I'm on site and you're able to see what is happening. Of course, for Savo, we've done an additional um, offer where we give you the weekly site updates. So you get to see the progress of each project, whether it's ongoing, whether it's complete, you get to see just the status of the project on a weekly basis to your email every Saturday. And then again, so does the developer own the land? So sometimes people have, you, you know, you've ticked all the boxes. They have an office, they nini, they nini. You've done the CR12, these people exist and all that. But then you've not checked on the title deed. So you really need to do a search. And very many people, especially even when you lose, and unfortunately when you lose, when you use lawyers sometimes, they don't do the thorough check. Yeah, You need to do a thorough check till the green card to just enable you to see from the government, where did this land go? Yeah? What is the status of this land? If it's, a, if it's a leasehold, how many years does it need extension? Yeah? Call out, call out. I think even for us in Savo, we've given an email. Um, it's alarm at Savo, alarm at Savo.ke. So when you've done your due diligence and you see something fishy, please give us feedback. Yeah? So go, don't tire. Check, 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 check as many times as you can to just ensure that whatever you're getting yourself into is actually is actually worth, you know, the, the, the amount of time you've used to raise that money. Yeah? If you're thinking of things like, um, even land, yeah? understand how long will it take for me to even have the ownership document. Yeah? Understand the process, understand the legal process, understand the legal implication of each and everything that you're getting yourself into. And then, um, does the developer also have, you know, the necessary approval documents? Yeah? NEMA, so you need to check all that. You could be having the title, but you're not, you don't have approvals. Then you'll see in Equa X, you can't go ahead with that construction. So those are the things to consider. Another thing is, does the developer have a lawyer? So different developers would have different, you know, just requirements. And uh, there are those who would offer you the lawyer to, to, you know, do the whole legal process for you. Of course, if you have an outside an outside lawyer, your lawyer will help you do the, you know, search and the due diligence, but our lawyer does end to end. So there are those who offer, give you an additional, you know, something at the top with the lawyer, meaning the lawyer is the one who will take you through the, the registration process. Then there are those who you, you are requested to come on board with your own lawyer. Us in Savo, we have our own lawyer. So our lawyers do everything. If you don't have a lawyer, our lawyer can help you just take you through the legal implications of the investment and the due diligence documents and help you understand. And of course, even us as a team, we've given ourselves a chance to understand what are the due diligence, you know, requirements and what is the legal implication and what are the, what are the requirements generally, yeah? And then, is the developer processing a contract for the transaction? So these people might actually have the land, but uh -huh, what's happening? Because you see, say for example, you're just a bit of, of, of a tip of what happens. So say for example, you're buying land to, to build, and you're buying land maybe in Kiambu. Yeah, Kiambu is one of the is one of the places we've done a project. So most lands in Kiambu are freehold, meaning you cannot do multi-dwelling. So there's a bit of a process that is required for you to do a change of use to enable that land to be leasehold, so that you can actually have multi-dwelling where you have very many investors who have invested in the same location and then you can do the registration of the you know, title, the sublease. So a sublease is what you get at the end if you're, if you're dwelling into an investment. So those are the things to factor when you're talking of due diligence. Yeah? But beyond that, if you're in the diaspora, then this is where the, the rubber hits the road. Because you might send someone who will not be an honest or a person of integrity to you. You might actually send someone and your person to Ina, Ina Enda, yeah? And so how do you choose a reliable person who will represent you in, in the country? So say, for example, you're coming to invest in Kenya. How do you choose that person? To be honest, if you're going into an investment, I would encourage you to just understand the investment. Once you've understood the investment, you can even talk to the person who will represent you to enable them understand what they're looking at when they're coming to look at this project that you want to invest. Send someone who has been in the industry. Look for someone who actually understands you know, what it entails to even invest in real estate, yeah? Look for someone who's quite aware of what happens in Kenya when you're talking of investments, yeah? And if by any chance you have a benefit of doubt and you're able to come to the country, please come to Kenya. Please come and see where you're putting your money. 
it's very important because sometimes it's very saddening that the, the real estate marketing even right now might suffer because very many people are coming and, and you know, just dropping the ball. So if you have a chance, please do come and see the physical project. Sorry, maybe before, before uh, I go on, I can just read the comments. I've seen very many comments have come in on YouTube. Um, uh, Lizzie, thank you so much, Lizzie, for joining us. She's saying, okay, you managed, you managed the property. Do you charge uh, for that? And what is it? So, yes. So we Savo, in Savo, we do end to end. Yeah, so we build all the way to management and we manage in the two sections. So we do common area management, that's property management, and then we offer property management for your individual unit. Those are two different things. So the common area is catered for by service charge. Of course, service charge will be dictated by the kind of amenities in that construction, by the number of units, by the number, you know, just the very, the very many things, but roughly our service charge is uh, roughly 1,000 Kenya shillings. So service charge caters for the common amenities and the common area. So cleaning, garbage, security, you know, everything that entails common amenities, if, have, if we have lifts, if we have a pool, all that. And then there's the management. Management for your individual unit. Of course, most of our investors have proved that they would prefer us managing for them because it gives you an opportunity to have a passive investment. If you're managing for yourself, then it becomes a bit more active because you need to get to the ground, get a tenant, or if you have someone living in the house, then it's, 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 you know, it's, it becomes now you, you're the one who's dealing with everything that's happening in the unit. So if you're managing for you, the management fee comes to about 8% of the net rent. Yeah? So say, for example, we are promising you a, rent, a gross rent of 25,000 Kenya shillings. The net rent will become about 24 because 1,000 Kenya shillings goes to service charge and then 8% of that 24,000. So our management fee comes to about 8%. The management fee caters for getting you a tenant, collecting your rent, and maintaining your unit. So if there's anything happening in your unit, you're not involved. All, all you need to, to have is send us your bank details at the, at the end of the month we send you the rent. Yeah. Um, Lizzie, I hope I've answered you. Irene, she's saying, interested in joint venture, kindly advise the process. Thanks. Irene, uh, at the end of this uh, session, I'll be able to share my contacts. We can, we, we can reach out on the same. And if anyone else needs advice on other things that I've not touched on, I'll share my email and my phone number. You kindly contact me. I'll be happy to take you through the whole process. Um, Jane, what is the average return for your past completed project? Uh, let me just answer that. So our average return, we promise a return on investment of 8%. If you calculate, you'll notice it comes to about 9% in different projects, but that is the growth. So then the ROI comes to about 8%. Um, again, you only do studios and one-bedroom flats. Kindly explain why we don't do three bedrooms. So we highly focus on one-bedrooms and studios. However, in certain locations, we've done a few two-bedrooms. So as I started by saying, we start from the data. So we look for a location, we've gotten the land that we feel this is comfortable, we've done a proper search, and we feel the land is in good condition and in the right, rightfully name, yeah? And then we do, a we do data. So we look at the location. Who is our clientele? When you go to the management side, we call it Savo Lifestyle. When you go to the Savo Lifestyle side, our customer is a young aspirational urbanite. Yeah? So these are guys straight from campus in their first jobs between the ages of 18 to about 35 there. That is the clientele for renting the apartment. Yeah? Because if you remember, we exist to enable our investors achieve financial independence through affordable, amazing apartments, our apartments. Yeah? So for you to, enable, to be able to achieve financial independence, it means you're taking that apartment and using it as rental income. So for that kind of, for depending on the location, different locations will have different needs. So we've done a number of projects, like for example, we've done Rongai, Rongai, Roisambu, and Tindigwa Rongai, Ongata Rongai, near Laser Hill Academy, uh, Roisambu near TRM, the Thika Road Mall, the Thika Road Superhighway, and uh, Tindigwa on Kiambu Road, along, uh, along Kiambu Road. So in these three locations, we have incorporated a few two bedrooms. Why? Because when you go to a place like Rongai, you'll notice someone living in Rongai is slightly older, can afford to move around. If they're working in town, can actually afford to move from Rongai to town easily, meaning they might be driving. So this is someone slightly older, might be a young family. So there we did two bedrooms. Then we went to Roisambu. The Roisambu, the population is, you know, it's a balance of the young and the slightly older. Yeah, slightly mature. So if you look at Roisambu, we did about... Um, 26 two bedrooms out of 400 units. So there are very few. The percentage is like five, 3%. Yeah? 
So um, there, of course, we were dedicated again by the, by the, by the data. So there are very many people, especially on Thika Road, who have, you know, the population in Thika Road is built by people who did, who studied in JQuat, that's Jomo Kenyatta University, people who studied in Kenyatta University, people who studied in USIU, and people working in town. Because that's an area that serves both those people, and it's very, it's very, it's like 15, 15 minutes away from Nairobi town. So if you're working in town, it's quite, it's quite easy. Yeah? So in that area, we also notice that these people might actually be living here a bit longer. And so as well, Kiambu Road. So there are areas where we've done two bedrooms, there are areas where we've not done two bedrooms. And this is entirely to benefit the investor in terms of return on investment. Uh, sorry, time is really going. So let me just uh, sum up. So uh, Talents is saying, I'm watching from here from Scotland. Thank you so much, Talents. I have Jakara, Jakara Bondi. We have two units with this company, Coral Belts and Resambu. Very satisfied. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being our Savorite. Did our due diligence. They're very transparent. Thank you so much. If you want anything on due diligence, definitely we'll send you all the documents based on that project. Um, Mama Mbugwa is saying, I have a one bedroom in Resambu going on well. Thank you so much, Mama Mbugwa. Uh, uh, Jaka, Jakara Bondi is saying, I'm in Dallas. Thank you so much. Uh, so we have shared there the link for due diligence. It's a very good... Um, it's a very good topic that we covered. Uh, one of our directors, Emily Bicharo, covered it. Uh, so please click the link and just see what, what we were talking about. Mamubuga said, from Nancy in the UK, thank you so much. Kindly help by having a foreign account as transferring funds these days is being massively uh, scrutinized. Th thank you so much, Nan uh, Nancy, for that uh, feedback. We'll definitely look at it and see how we can always have, uh, you know, a dollar account or an international account to help you transfer. Stephen Dung, I'm watching from England. Uh, oh, sorry, from Scotland. Many thanks. Thank you so much, Stephen. Victor Huria, he's one of our investors. I was at Royal Service last week and I was impressed with the current progress plus the, breath the breathtaking views. Thank you so much, Victor. Lizzie, she's saying Skywalk Apartments Studio for 2 million to earn 15,000. So give and take, give or take 10%. Other investments making more way than that. So for us, we, we give what we can because we cannot overpromise and then under deliver. By the time we are getting to a place where we are saying the cost of this project will be X amount and the return is X amount is because we've done proper data research. Unfortunately, sometimes we might not have the biggest returns. It's very possible. But whatever we promise, we live up to it. And we can only live up to it if the data has actually confirmed. It might be very flowery to actually tell you at 2 million, you'll go and fetch 20,000. But at that point of management, if I am stuck to actually ensure that you get a tenant who's paying you 20,000, I have failed. I have not lived as by my, pa, my purpose in Savo. So if, if I'm honestly ensuring that you get towards financial independence, then my promise needs to be to the one. So all the promises that we keep on board is based on data. Yeah? There are other projects that will have better returns, but it's entirely data driven. Our minimum, bare, bare minimum is 8% on all locations that we've selected. And then we have Martin Kanye. Martin Kanye is one of our investors as well. He's still, uh, and yeah, EDC, or oh, is still the EDC for Royal Suburbs. Inter oh, completion date, yeah. So we, we are working with still the same timeline, 31st December, and we'll start the handover process next year. Um, Martin Kanye, I love everything so far. I have experience with Savo team. Thank, thank you so much, Martin. I'm always saying, what is the right age to invest? When you're talking about investments, there's no right age, yeah? As long as you are at a point of where you've defined your why, yeah? You start the discipline as early as possible. It's never too early, it's never too late. If you can start, and you know, getting that discipline to save, getting that, and, and Fortunately or unfortunately, COVID has really shown us the importance of having a buffer, the importance of having something to run to. So as long as you have something, if you, if, as long as you have something that you can afford to save, please do start. And then uh, in the process, as you gain the discipline to save, you will understand the why, and then you can start investing. It's never too late. Even us as Savo, we, we en encourage everyone, as young, as old as you are, please join the, the, the fire tribe you know, aspire to be financially independent. Um, uh, here, oh, sorry, we've, I've just shared my number. My number is 0727-648-552. At the front, it's plus 254, so that's for Kenya. That's my WhatsApp number. Please reach out to me. 
My email address is also there, Martha at Savo.ke. I'll, I'll repeat at the end, Martha at Savo.ke. Sally Kimtai is asking, what is the minimum amount required to start investing at Savo? So at Savo, we are trying to incorporate something called Savo Saves, where it will give you a platform where you can save as little as 20,000 to actually start investing. But so far for the projects that we've launched out, all you require is the initial amount, the initial capital, which is about 20%. So if you're taking a studio for 2 million, for example, the 20% is 400,000, then you can take a payment plan of up to five years, interest-free, which comes to about 26,000 a month. That is in Kenya shillings. So that's about $20,000, 2000 $20,000, some, $2,000, $20,000. Uh, Espada, do you have a rent to own model that a young aspiration urbanite could start investing in without the need to split their income? between rent and investments. Hopefully before the end of the year, we'll have launched that session. Of course, we had looked at our tenancy because right now we've done a couple of projects that have very many tenants who are young aspirational urbanites. These are people who have willingly started working or they're doing something to generate cash flow and we want to maximize just to build the culture of saving and investing. So we'll be able to launch that very, very soon. We'll share all the details online and on our website and definitely we'll be able to incorporate every age in the investment journey. Um, Isaac is asking, what's the best, best rental yield one, that one can get in the re real estate industry in Kenya today? So very many companies give different, you know, return on investment. Yeah? However, as you judge the return on investment, kindly understand the implication behind it. So say, for example, you're buying somewhere where you're just buying, then you'll take up the responsibility of doing your, your own management. Will you be able to achieve or get someone who can afford to give you that return on investment? Yeah. The ROI varies based on the company, based on the costing. Based, so if your apartment is 5 million and you're giving a return of 7% or 15%, it's very possible. But for us as Savo, we try to be in the affordable space. So our projects run between 2 million and 3 million max. So the return on investment is based on the cost. So it's the cost that you've given times against the, you know, the, 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 the yearly month rental income that you've received. So then that's how you can calculate your ROI. So it's entirely based on the cost, the, the project, it, it varies, it varies. But definitely real estate has a promising return on investment. Uh, I can see Jane, uh, which project is now selling? Is it Skywalk or are, are all other projects sold out? We're currently selling Savo Skywalk. Savo Skywalk is our sixth project. It's in Gong Road near Junction Mall. There's a place called Wanyi. That is the project we are currently selling. We usually sell our projects off plan when they're ongoing, in progress, yeah? So all our projects are sold out at the moment, minus Savo Skywalk, where you can get something. We'll share the information shortly. Sorry, we are running out of time, but I'll be able to share the information on um, Savo Skywalk. I've seen a question here on Facebook from Beatty. Do you have plans of doing Marshonets or, uh, or bungalows in future? We are still understanding this space. Yeah? And everything that we're doing, even if it's a new model, we go back to the purpose and say, does this align with the purpose? Will this enable us achieve, you know, enable us achieve our purpose? So because of that, we are still in the testing time. We have not come up with a definite answer of whether we'll go into that direction. But what we've defined as ourselves is we'll be in the affordable space. Whether it's in that direction or not, we'll stick to the affordable space. But for now, not yet. Uh, sorry, they've just shared my contact on Facebook as well. You can reach me out on Facebook. Thank you so much, guys, for joining on uh, on Instagram as well. Time has really gone. Maybe I can just take you through the project. Who is Savo? In case of any questions, feel free to reach out to my number is on the screen 0727 648 My email is martha at savo.ke. Of course, you can also check our, our, our website and our social media handles at savo.ke. So maybe to just take you through our project. So we started in Rongai. Rongai, Laser Hill, Laser Place by Savo was our first project. There we did one bedrooms and, and, and two bedrooms. The project is in two blocks, as you can see on the screen. Uh, the project is sold out and fully let. Then after Rongai, we went to Embakasi, 90 degrees, phase one. So 90 degrees is near East African School of Aviation, directly opposite the airport. So you can see the airport view from this side. It's on Airport North Road. That's JKIA Airport. We are near a place called Kabansora Millers. I think if you had come to Kenya a long time, that's very familiar. So Kabansora Millers, we're ne next to also East African School of Aviation. There we've done one bedrooms and studios. The project is fully sold out and fully let. Then after that, we went to Coral Belt, Tindigua, where we are actually at. Our offices are also in Tindigua. So if you're in Kenya, you can please pass by our office and just say hi or share your feedback from the 
life. So Coral Belts by Savo is in Tindigua uh, on Kiambu Road. Uh, here we did uh, four blocks, two faces. We, uh, the project is fully complete and fully sold out. We have one bedroom, a few two bedrooms. There were only seven and studios. Uh, the pre the, we are currently at about 90% let. We have 500 units here. We have about 480 residents currently. We started letting the project, uh, the final block, the final phase, this year, say after March, after, after COVID had settled a bit in Kenya. And then we went to Roisambu. So I've seen very many of our investors in Roisambu and of course Tindigua. So Roisambu was one of the projects we've done. Roisambu we've done phase one. It's called Royal Suburbs. If you were in Kenya Kitambo before uh, we took over the namings of the place, Roisambu was called Royal Suburbs. Then Atungesema Royal, Tukasema Royal Sabu, then it became Roisambu. So Royal Suburbs, uh, it, it, it's right on Thika Road Super Highway. So you can see the highway from, from the project. We're right behind TRM, Thika Road Mall. Uh, there we've done one bedroom studios and a few two bedrooms. Uh, the project is sold out. We are looking to complete it this year. So you can see the render and uh, th that's how it will look at the very end. But that's where the project is at. Uh, we'll also share the site update so that you can be able to see, you know, where the projects are at now. And then after Roy Sambu, we went to now Skywalk. Oh, sorry, Sabo Studios and Bakasi first. I had forgotten. So in Bakasi, we've done phase one and two, just like Tindigo. So in Bakasi, we've done phase one and two. So phase two of Mbakasi is called Savo Studios. It's about 200 meters from phase one. So it's still within the same locality near East African School of Aviation and Kabansora. There we've done one bedrooms and studios. When we started, we called it Savo Studios because it was meant to be fully studios. But of course, I, as I had said, we are really guided by data. So when we did the data for phase one, we noticed that very many people really like the one bedrooms in terms of tenancy. Yeah, because us, we promise you a return on investment. So we'll give you something that is very marketable there. So we did, we changed a bit. We increased the number of one bedrooms in Savo Studios, but it still remained as Savo Studios. Savo Studios is complete. We've just been handing over the project since October and people have started moving in. We are now at, I think, 30%. We started letting in November. We're currently at 30, 30-40%. And then we are now selling Gong Road, Savo Skywalk. So Savo Skywalk is our sixth project. Um, I'm very excited because it's the biggest project now. Kitambo, Coral Bells used to be the, big, the biggest project. So Coral Bells has 500 units. Uh, Savo Skywalk in Gong Road will have 600 units. It's a very new, unique design. You can see the glass pattern. Uh, we'll have an infinity pool at the rooftop. So just, just a place where someone who is a young aspirational urbanite would feel comfortable to live in. There we have one bedrooms. We have junior one bedrooms and we have studios. We have three types. In Savo Skywalk, we, have, we don't have two bedrooms. So we are selling one bedrooms, uh, junior one bedrooms, and studios. So the one bedrooms are going for $30,000. That's 3 million Kenya shillings. We have the junior one bedroom. So we did a junior one bedroom because we noticed there are very many people who would want, even for an investor, you'd want to buy a one bedroom, but 3 million might be on a higher end. So we created a product for an in-between, yeah, where you can actually get a one bedroom. It's just the difference is slightly smaller. So we have a one bedroom at 2.5 2.5 million that's about 25,000 US dollars and then we have the studio at 20,000 US dollars which is 2 million Kenya shillings. So we try to be very affordable. We've just taken our products. If you've noticed the locations that we've picked, Gong Road is the, you know, uptown one now. Uh, but we've just taken our products from Kiambu Road, Roisambu, Mbakasi and taken them to Gong Road. Yeah? So we are still in the affordable space and we try to make it even more affordable by offering a payment plan. So the payment plan runs from one year. In this case, one year we call it 20 months, which is the construction period. So from one year up to five years, interest free. So someone who will pay between today, say you're, you're getting in December to July 2022, which is about 19 months, you'll pay, if it's a one bedroom, you'll pay 30,000 US dollars or 3 million Kenya shillings. If you're taking five years, you will still pay 30,000 US dollars or 3 million Kenya shillings. It's interest free. So we try to make it that way because very many people want to invest and we want to capture the very many people, especially in the diaspora, to invest back home and gain financial independence. However, accessible financing is an issue. And if you look at just Savo and the purpose and how we define ourselves, really against mortgage, loans, consumerism, just being at a point where you can actually afford an investment without running to the bank for a loan. 
So because of that, we offer a payment plan where you can be flexible enough to pay even within five years, or if you've taken five years and finish faster and be able to actually have an investment back home that will generate for you cash, cash flows. Yeah, I hope I've been able to take you through properly uh, Savo Skywalk. We've also shared the link to show uh, the, 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 the progress of the project. We started in July. Uh, we look, we are looking to complete the project in July 2022. So that's the progress so far. We are almost going to first floor. And um, sorry, Irene, let me just answer you. Um, my phone number is 0727-648-552. If you're in the diaspora, it's plus 254. That's the Kenyan, num the Kenyan code. Plus 254-727-648-552. Yeah, uh, uh, we have Judith, she's saying watching from Edinburgh, that's in Scotland. Thank you so much, Judith. Dennis Muti. Oh, thank you for sharing my number. Yes, that is my phone number here, Martha's contact. That's my number. Uh, Leonard Ncharo. Leonard Ncharo is the man behind Diani <laughs> Moneji. So, so Savo is owned by Leonard Ncharo and Emily Ncharo. Leonard Ncharo is a renowned architect. He's done quite a number of, you know, um, um, architectural designs. And he's also a pro. We call him Prof. He's saying proud of what you're doing, Ma. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Leonard. He calls me Ma. Martha, short form. Uh, we've, we've shared the site updates for our, 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 our weekly site updates for Ngong Road. So you can see Ngong Road, Savo Skywalk, what we're currently selling. You can see Roy Sambo. We started in February 2019, which means it will take 18 months. You can see Kembu Road. So Kembu Road is, of, of course, complete. We have Lady Helen. Wow, I'm proud of you guys. Thank you so much, Helen. Uh, yes, Helen has also shared my number. Thank you so, so much. Uh, Collins, Collins is saying he's watching from Champs Media. Champs Media is uh, Alex Chamwada's uh, station. Thank you so much. Alex Chamwada once spoke, uh, uh, reviewed us in one of his uh, um, videos, Daring Abroad. Um, and I can see Collins there. Thank you so much, Collins. Lady Helen is saying, I will definitely call for more information. Thank you, thank you so much. She's watching from Scotland. Thank you, thank you so much. I think we are really, really past time. I hope I've been able to answer all your questions. If I haven't been able to answer your, all your questions, please visit our website, check our, check our projects. Call me on 0727-648-552. My email is martha at savo.ke. Thank you, thank you so much. The details will be down below. Thank you, thank you so much. Enjoy your morning if you're in the diaspora. And have a good evening if you're in Kenya. Thank you. Thank you.